So what's happening guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we are continuing part two of our series on how to make your dialogue sound better here in DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna be working in DaVinci Resolve 18. And if you haven't checked out the first video that we did, link above, go check that out. We talk about how to set the audio levels in your camera as well as the audio levels in DaVinci Resolve. And we also talked about how to work with the EQ a little bit. So you wanna kind of get that stuff out of the way before we jump into part two here, which we're gonna be talking about compression. So let's quickly define what is compression. Comp Compression is going to affect the dynamic range of your audio. Now that might sound a little confusing, don't get worried about it. Let's take a look at a waveform here. You'll notice when I talk really quiet like this, our waveform is pretty small. But if I get all jazzed up and I talk a little bit louder like this, our waveform is gonna be a lot bigger. Now there was no compression applied to that little portion of the clip there. And did you notice that there was a big difference between the volume of my quieter parts and the volume of my louder parts? Well, compression is gonna help take those two parts and help reduce the dynamic range to give us a more consistent sounding audio between the quiet parts and the loud parts. And looking at the waveform here, we can use compression to bring down the parts of the clip that are a little bit louder, kind of reduces the volume there, compresses it a little bit. And we can also use compression to increase the volume of the lower end or the quieter parts of our clips. So let me roll back the video here and let's just play that same clip again here with compression applied and tell me if you can hear a difference. <laughs> when I talk really quiet like this, our waveform is pretty small. But if I get all jazzed up and I talk a little bit louder like this, our waveform is gonna be a lot bigger. When I talk really quiet like this, our waveform is pretty small. But if I get all jazzed up and I talk a little bit louder like this, our waveform is gonna be a lot bigger. So what'd you think? Could you hear the difference? Comment down below, cause I wanna know if you guys noticed the difference between the audio being a little more consistent. So we're gonna jump over into DaVinci Resolve and we're gonna work with that little clip there. I'm gonna show you compression, how to find it, how to apply it onto your clip. We're gonna talk about buttons and the dials and what they do. And then there's some really cool features here that we're gonna talk about that can make your dialogue sound a little bit closer to the audience or a little bit farther away. So without further ado, let's jump into Resolve and check out compression and make our audio sound better and more professional. All right, so jumping into DaVinci Resolve here, the first thing that we want to do is talk about where do we find compression? We're going to find compression inside the dynamics, which lives in the mixer, which is in Fairlight. So here's how we get there. So right now I'm in the edit tab right here. I've got my clips in here that I want to use. And this is the first example that you just saw in the intro there. But let's jump into the Fairlight tab. So you want to come on over here at the bottom, click on Fairlight. And that's going to jump you over into the Fairlight tab. Now I'm just going to adjust my view a little bit here so I can see better. So you want to have open your mixer. So to find the mixer, come on at the top here. And I do have the inspector open, so I'm going to close that. You got the mixer right here at the top of the screen. And then you've got your mixer down over here. So make sure the mixer is open. And you want to go into your dynamics. So you can find your dynamics right here. If you don't see it for some reason, click on the three little dots and come on down to dynamics. And that'll make sure that it's showing up here for you in the mixer. So double click the dynamics and it's going to jump you into your dynamics window, which looks a little something like this. I do have a video where I talked about all the different parts of each one of these sections here, but today we're just going to be talking about the compressor. So the compressor lives right here and just take a look at this window. We are going to be looking at our input. We're going to be using our graph here. We'll see our gain reduction here, which is where the compression is going to be applied. The makeup we're going to be using, the makeup is going to help us boost up those quieter parts of our audio clip. So that's going to be important. And then we've got the output. We can see what kind of levels we have coming out of the dynamics here once we make some changes. So jumping in, I know some of you guys, all you care about is you just want to get a compressor set and you just want to put it in there and just go and have it be good. You don't care about the knobs, buttons, and dials, how to make adjustments to your compressor and why. So if that's what you're interested in, real quick, here's how you can get a one-click setting to just have a compressor on there and make your audio sound better, hopefully. So in the dynamics panel here, right at the top, we have a little drop down and it's going to say default up here by default, but you can pick one of these guys right here for dialogue. You've got dialogue, basic compression, expander, full expander and soft knee. So if I pick the soft knee one here, you can see it turns on the compressor. We've got a few settings changed here. So if you don't care about all the other stuff on how to make the adjustments and why, Go ahead and just apply one of these presets that are here in DaVinci Resolve 18, and hopefully that should kind of get your audio in a, in a pretty good spot. But I'm going to recommend that you keep watching this video, that you learn what these different knobs, buttons, and dials do, and why we adjust them the way that we do. So let's dig into the compressor a little bit more here, and I'm going to show you why and how to make changes to make the compressor work the best for your audio clip. Now covering the compressor, let's look at these knobs, buttons, and dials real quick. So we've got the compressor right here. To turn on the compressor, just click on this little toggle right here. Now there are some 
some default settings that are already set here. Your threshold is set at minus 15. So what is the threshold? So threshold means where does that compressor start to kick in? And you can change where that is. Right now it's at minus 15 dB. So if we were to look at our input meters right here, minus 15 dB, whenever the signal gets to that point, that's when the compressor would kick in and compress any of the louder parts of our audio that go above that minus 15 dB. The ratio, so the ratio says how much should I compress the audio once it goes above the threshold. So in this case, once it goes above that minus 15 right here, how much should I compress it? So for every two decibels that it goes over 15, it's gonna compress it by one. So for dialogue and audio, you typically wanna go in that two, two to one to three to one range. So right now it's about two to one and you can come up to about three to one. You start going more than that, it starts eh, sounding a little wonky. You, unless you're going for a certain kind of sound or effect, you probably don't wanna go higher than three to one. Next you have the knee, and this is a new tool that we have here in DaVinci Resolve 18. The knee affects this point right here. So instead of the compressor coming in and kicking in hard, the knee allows you to gradually come into the compression. So if you see, if I grab the knee here, and just to exaggerate this so we can see it a little better, I'm gonna adjust these and we're looking at this point right here. So right now it's a hard change right there, but if I boost up the knee a little bit, you can see it kind of softens that out. So it kind of eases into the compression. So that can kind of help too, just kind of not make it sound so obvious if you're doing a lot of compression. Um, and it just helps it ease into that compressor versus just hitting that compressor hard. And if you do want to reset any of these, just double click the wheel and it's going to reset it to its default settings. So the last dial we have up here is called the mix. So the mix is going to tell us, do we want to take our compressed audio that ran through our compressor and mix it back in with some of the original audio? You can almost think about it as like an opacity for the effect, right? The more mix we add in here, all the way up to 100% would mean that we're not applying any kind of effect or very little. And if you bring it back down to zero, that means you're getting the full dynamics, the full compressor in there. And you may want to use that sometimes. A lot of times I just leave it at zero, but just depends on how it works out on your clip. Next here we have the attack. So the attack says, how quickly does that compressor kick in? So once our audio gets to this point right here and we want this compressor to kick in right here, how fast does that happen? So the default here is 1.4 milliseconds. You can bring it down to 0.7 or bring it up and make it longer, make it take longer to kick in if that's what you wanna do. And I've got a few cool little tips uh, in a minute here about these three knobs on the bottom here. So we'll talk about that in a second. But for now, I'm just gonna leave the attack at the default setting. The hold, the hold says how long once the compressor kicks in. So we're listening to our audio, boom, that compressor kicks in. It's limiting some of our peaks. How long does the compressor hold on once there's no more signal coming in that needs to be compressed. So once your peaks of your, your audio stop, how long does the compressor hold on before it starts to release and let go of the compression? And by default here, it's set at zero. The release section here says, okay, once that hold is done and I want to go back to my normal audio, I don't want any compression on there because maybe your particular clip doesn't need it at that time. How long does it take for that clip to release and go back to its normal sound? So right now it's at 93 milliseconds, but you can bring it all the way up, you know, up to 4,000 if you want, which is like four seconds, I believe. 1,000 milliseconds is a second, right? I think. So you can make some adjustments there. So I'm just going to double click. We're going to reset to the default settings for right now. And lastly here, you have side chain. You have a send and a listen button here. So we're not going to be using these in this video, but if you wanted to do something like audio ducking and have your music automatically duck underneath your audio, you can send out the signal from this track, send it to another track, and then you can have that other track use the listen button right here. And that other track will respond to the side chain here. And for example, adjust your music to duck below or drop the volume below your speaking vocals. And then if you stop speaking, that music will go back up to whatever level it's set at. Super cool, super handy. I do have a video about audio ducking link up here if you wanna go check that out. For now, we're not gonna be using it in this video, but it's good to know what it does and why it's there. All right, so before we get into the compression here, what I wanna do is loop my audio here. Again, I am in Fairlight and I wanna select my range. So I'm gonna use this tool right here. I'm gonna select my range, which is this. I'm gonna hit my loop button and then I'm also gonna use option or alt on a PC plus the forward slash button and that's gonna loop our audio. So we just keep hearing the same part over and over again. I'm gonna bring my compressor back here and listen to it once without the compressor on, then I'm gonna turn it on, and then we're gonna start working with some of these buttons and dials here. So let's hear how it sounds from the beginning. When I talk really quiet like this, our waveform is pretty small, 
But if I get all jazzed up and I talk a little bit louder like this, our waveform is gonna be a lot bigger. All right, so that's what it sounds like without any compression. Now let's add some compression. And as I play through, Take a look at our little graph here. It's gonna actually show me where the audio is occurring. And this is a really cool new feature here in DaVinci Resolve 18 that I love. We can see where the audio is happening. So check when this I talk, out. When I talk really quiet like this, our waveform is pretty small. So you can see when I'm talking and the volume is low, it's quiet, it's right around here, right? Now watch when I talk a little bit louder. But if I get all jazzed up and I talk a little bit louder like this, our waveform is gonna be a lot bigger. So it's really cool that you can see on that graph where our audio is happening. Now I wanna boost up my makeup a little bit because I want it to be a little louder and I'm gonna watch my levels here and then we're gonna to start to work with some of our other buttons here in the compressor. So the makeup is gonna help bring up those quieter parts, right? We wanna make those louder. And by default, the louder parts are gonna get louder too, but that's where the compressor is gonna come in and help kind of bring down those loud parts. So let's listen in and make some adjustments here to our makeup. When I talk really quiet, like this, our waveform is pretty small. But if I get all jazzed up and I talk really quiet like this, our waveform is pretty small. All right, so I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm liking where my levels are falling with the quieter parts there. So now I can see where the quiet parts are coming in. So if I play back again here, and I talk really quiet like this. So right up to about here. So it's a little bit lower than where my threshold is currently set at. So this blue line here, that represents my threshold. So I'm gonna dial this back, let's say uh, like 23. I don't know, let's see how that works out. And I talk really quiet like this. So on the quiet parts, we don't wanna be using any compression. And this middle meter right here is our compression. So when this lights up blue, it's gonna show us how much reduction is being done to our audio, reduction in far as far as DB level. And I talk really quiet like this, our waveform is pretty small. But if I get all jazzed up and I talk a little bit louder like this, our waveform is gonna be a lot bigger. So you can see when it started to get to the louder parts of my audio, we did more compression. And how much did it come down? I'll jazz up and I talk a little bit louder like this. Or so it's reducing maybe three to six dB somewhere in that range, and I'm okay with that. You can tell it sounds a little bit different, but that's what the compressor is gonna do. So let's say maybe we wanna compress it a little more. We can bring up our ratio a little bit, which again is gonna make it compress a little bit more here. So we'll try three to one, see if we can hear a difference in that. Now we can also use the knee a little bit here. And I, can, I like to use this because it just kind of helps ease the transition into the compression and makes it a little less obvious. Uh, it just kind of smooths it out a little bit. So I'm going to bring the knee up. Let's just do like 50, 50% 50 and see how that sounds. Let's play through the clip and see what we got. When I talk really quiet like this, our waveform is pretty small. But if I get all jazzed up and I talk a little bit louder like this, our waveform is gonna be a lot bigger. So now as far as the attack, hold, and release, if you're just getting started with compression, you can just leave these where they're at and just go with the default settings and that should work out just fine. But go ahead and make adjustments if you need to. A lot of times where you're gonna use these, at least for me, is if I'm using the automatic audio ducking and by using these send and listen buttons, then I can adjust my attack, hold, and release and it's gonna affect how quickly the music you know drops in volume and how quickly it goes back up as i'm speaking and all that kind of stuff so you could just go with the default settings here and that should work out just fine so let's listen to the original real quick and then listen to our compressed audio here and see if you could hear a difference see if it sounds a little bit better to you here's our original when i talk really quiet like this our waveform is pretty small but if i get all jazzed up and i talk a little bit louder like this our waveform is going to be a lot bigger when i talk really quiet like this our waveform is pretty small but if I get all jazzed up and I talk a little bit louder like this, our waveform is gonna be a lot bigger. So can you hear the difference there? You can tell that the louder parts are a little compressed, uh, but you can also hear that the quieter parts got brought up a little bit. So compression can make a real big difference in just trying to like even things out a little bit. Before we take a look at another example here, I would like to thank today's sponsor and that is Audio. What if I told you for $59 for an entire year, you could have unlimited music and sound effects for your videos. And I'm not just talking your videos here on YouTube. Maybe it's client work, maybe it's broadcast work. Whatever you're using your videos for, $59 for an entire year, you can have unlimited music and sound effects. And that's what audio offers you. They have a ton of great stuff. I'm always going on there trying to find some music for my videos. All the music in this video is from audio and they also have a ton of great sound effects. You've got some huge brands that use the assets from audio here like Nike and Wrangler, ESPN, Netflix, and more. There is just so much great stuff here. Literally, you 
you could look through for hours and find tons of great music. Audio has new songs that are added every day. There's thousands of songs and sound effects. It's all curated really well. You can search through it easily to try and find the different types of music that you might be looking for for your videos. And with the Audio Pro plan, you get unlimited access to all this stuff. $59 if you use the code in the link in the description below. And you're going to save a lot of money. So if you're interested in trying out audio, definitely use the link in the description below. Try it out for $59 bucks a year. I, I, that's a great deal. I mean, that's why I'm bringing this to you guys because it's a great deal. So a big thank you to Audio for sponsoring today's video. Now let's jump back into DaVinci Resolve here. We're going to use our audio and just see how we can use the settings in the compressor to help bring our dialogue in front of our music tracks. And you're going to hear how we kind of set it into the music versus make it stand out a little bit. So let's get back into editing our audio here in DaVinci Resolve. All right, so let's talk about those cool features that I mentioned with the attack, the hold, and the release. So the attack right here. So if your attack time is fast, right? So if it's 0.7 or, or even at the default, if it's a fast attack time, that's going to give you a more aggressive sound on your compressor. It's going to kick in quicker and it's going to really emphasize those consonants in your speaking. Now, if you use a slower attack time, so if I crank this guy up and I use a slower time, that's going to make the voice kind of sound a little more uh, intimate, a little bit closer, and it's going to allow those consonants to go past the compressor and not get caught up in the compressor. So for example, here is my voice with the compressor using a fast attack time. And here is my voice using a slow attack time on the compressor. Can you hear a difference in that? But taking a look at the release here, the release is kind of cool. So with a fast release, it's going to grab the beginnings and the ends of your words. And it's just going to kind of make that vocal sound a little bit closer to you. Now, if that release time is a little bit slower, it's going to make the vocal or the dialogue sound a little bit farther away, right? A little bit more distant maybe than than it would if you have a fast release time. So probably the best way that you can see how the attack and the release work as far as bringing the audio to the front and bringing the audio to the back is to put some audio on top of music and then just adjust the settings so you can hear the differences. So that's what I'm gonna show you right now, me on top of some music, and then you're gonna be able to hear those differences between the attack and release. I'll note it on the screen where I have each setting. So check this out. What's up guys, little audio, we are gonna be laying on top of our music track here. And we're gonna use the compressor to get in there, kind of work with our compression a little bit, get our quiet levels here up a little louder, and as well as bring our loud levels down a little bit. And then we're gonna use those attack, hold, and release buttons to kind of help get that audio to sit in front of our, our music and make sure that you can hear me nice and crisp. Now, if I dial those things back and I want my vocal or my dialogue to sound like it's a little farther away, this is kind of what it sounds like if you do that. And it kind of hides behind the music a little bit. You know, you can still hear it, sure. But it's not as clear as if I change those settings to something more like this. And then you can hear it more in the front of the audio. Hopefully you guys can hear a difference. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Can you hear the difference between our settings here that we're working with? Again, the music track comes from audio. 59 bucks for the year. Definitely go check those out. All right, so could you guys hear the difference there between when the dialogue was in front of our mix or our music in this case versus when it was kind of set into the mix a little bit more? Definitely a difference there. And if you use the attack and you make it slower, it's going to give you a more aggressive sound. And if you slow it down, it's just going to give you a smoother, more mellow kind of sound. So that is compression in a nutshell, why you should use it. And I definitely think you should use a little bit of compression all the time. So did you find this video on compression? helpful and I want to know are you using compression now and will you be after watching this video do you have a good enough understanding of how to work with the compressor to get your audio to sound better to help even out your dialogue a little bit there between your quiet parts and your loud parts if you do have questions leave it down in the comments below I do my best to try and answer all your guys questions and help you learn the most you can here in DaVinci Resolve so that wraps up part two here of how to make your dialogue sound better in DaVinci Resolve so all these little things make a big difference and before you know it you are going to have some awesome audio in your videos guys thank you for watching stay tuned for the next part where we talk about how to clean Clean up a few little things here and there in your audio and continue to sweeten it and make it sound a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.